Street. Now your hosts, Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark. Good morning, I'm Nico DeHaan. Welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle, where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world. That's to recover our natural health and regain our rights and our freedoms. I'm Paige Clark. Good morning. And it's a beautiful morning in downtown St. Petersburg, 74 degrees. Kind of rainy. Uh, yeah, rainy days rainy. and Mondays, but yeah. I like them sometimes. Humidity's Makes you get things up. done. Yeah, it's kind of the May that uh, starts to creep up into the middle 80s and then before you know it, it's June and 90. Boom. And time to go okay. somewhere on vacation to get yeah, out of it. <laughs> exactly. Please subscribe to our Health Signals newsletter. This is a great opportunity to stay connected to our show and you get with clickable links of great information that Nico and I find and pass to each other all during the week. That's for sure. And also, uh, please pick up our Primal Edge, our one-shot wonder, with over 310 cell-ready ingredients, liquid ingredients, all made to make it uh, easy to take and, of course, to let the good stuff in. And the bad stuff out. And if you were up and at it, give us a call this morning at 877-927-6648. Yes, indeedy. You know, I thought this was interesting. I was looking at the feed that we put together, Nico, and... Uh, the greatest epidemic sickness known to humanity and people you know we're always talking about staying healthy and avoiding that kind of thing but maybe what's really the issue is something much more stealth in a sense uh, this is a two-part article and it's written by Paul Levy and he's a pioneer in the field of uh, spiritual emergence he helps people heal mm -hmm. not only spiritually heal but uh, wounds and things like that so he's a kind of a wound master and uh, he is talking about a book uh, that's called Columbus and the Other uh, Cannibals and a couple of other books he's reading uh, one that he wrote called The Madness of George W. Bush a reflection of our collective psychosis and it's very interesting because I've always talked about uh, that the beginning of civilization is where we started with our problems. Or what we <clears throat> call civilization. Perhaps, exactly. perhaps we were not the civilized ones. Perhaps that's true. Uh -huh. And it seems like after the last ice age, when we emerged, <clears throat> we started uh, developing a type of culture. And not everybody did this because we know that the native people of uh, America, North America, and some of the South America cultures were a lot different than the European type of cultures that finally developed in the Middle Ages. But it really stems from the whole thing of Egypt and the Romans and Greece and talking about people dominating other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've always talked about that the, the beginning of this started with the change in the food because you can't have armies if they're not being fed. Mm -hmm. And armies can only travel when food is available with, to travel along with them. That means you have to have food that you can store and other people can't take. Right, I remember that movie 300 and all the, yeah. the soldiers and they, they lived off amaranth and, and wheat. It mm -hmm. was to give them energy to go right. another day. Right. Yeah. Well, we know the real energy is in the meat that's eating the wheat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we've always talked about that the emergence of the white man out of Europe was the real problem for the native people of this country. It does sound that it was really, that maybe perhaps that book, Columbus and the Other Cannibals, is, is properly titled. Yeah, so what we're talking about is an epidemic, and they call this in the book Watiko. Yeah, it says, tragically, the history of the world for the past 2,000 years is in great part the story of the epidemiology of the Watiko disease. It's a malignant egophrenia, a psychosis in the true sense of the world. Yeah, it's a Cree term which uh, refers to the diabolical wicked people or spirit who t terrorize others. Sick souls. And this comes in many forms. We have, I always have a picture of the guy in the, on the train with the long rifle shooting the buffalo. Mm -hmm. And that's how we killed all the buffalo and just about made them extinct, not for food. And uh, uh, can you imagine the native people seeing this? How diabolical. I mean, this they must be... Say, yeah, they were looking and saying, how could you do... They revered that spiritual animal. Right, so this must be their 9-11 type of thing that I'm thinking this, the Native people see this train, and, of course, they saw it coming, but uh, it's, it's a very devastating thing when you see something that's wasteful happening. Uh, when we see the Amazon rainforest being destroyed for farming, mm -hmm. which we would consider the wrong approach. Uh, when we see slavery, when we see the sex trafficking, when we see our modern society, we see a huge part of that society being sick with disease of killing, disease of capturing people, of doing terrible things to people, to hoarding food, to hoarding money, 
whatever it is, it's still the same disease in a sense. And so I'm, I think all of us have this in us. You know, we have bank accounts, we hoard food, we hoard uh, money, and we do it for our own good because we need to survive. But it's a different mentality than living kind of day to day or week to week or season to season that our uh, ancestors seem to have. Uh -huh. especially in the Americas. Because if we look past the past 10,000 years, in society's terms where we had the Egyptians and we had the Greeks and mm. we had the Romans and then finally the Europeans coming up, we see nothing but the violence and the locking up of the food and the treatment of human beings uh, by the higher powers horribly. Well, I think of the biblical um, phrase, Ephesians 6:12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm -hmm. And I think there are a lot of cultures, regardless of biblically, you know, where you're at with all that, mm -hmm. other cultures saw that the evilness was not just at the flesh and blood, but was in the mind. It was in the spirit. Okay. It was in the soul. It was in a degradation right. of what was going on. It, it definitely came uh, mm -hmm. from, it had to come from that survival instinct, in a sense, that we all have. But somewhere along the line, human beings have this humanity that kind of buffers it. Mm -hmm. uh, saying, you know, if there's only enough food for one, you and I, Paige, are going to share it. Whereas the other one says, the hell with you, I'm going to kill you, I'll eat it all, and I'll survive. Yeah, the Watiko person. <laughs> the Watiko person. So there is a divide there, and what would we do at any circumstances depends on the circumstances itself and probably our upbringing and whether we have that center like the native people did here or the Indian spirit type of thing or whether we have that white man spirit where we take everything and we leave trash. The author says, like a fractal, Watiko operates on multiple dimensions simultaneously, just like I just read from the right. Bible. Mm -hmm. Intrapersonality within individuals, intrapersonally, between ourselves, as well as collectively as a species. Cannibalism, in the author's words, is the consuming of another's life for one's own private purpose or profit. So really, when you see that, you see this in everyday life across countries and different... Um, I mean, yes. you know, we've heard about well, our different... whole modern civilization, when we, whether we're talking about capitalism or we're talking about socialism or communism or Nazism, all these things stem from the same system. Mm -hmm. And this is the Wetiko system. Mm -hmm. It's not the tribal system where we share and we make sure that nobody goes without, that we make sure that we're pretty much on equal terms, even though nobody's on equal terms. Yeah, I have a comment about that when we come back. Okay, when did the spread of Wichico actually happen? And yeah, was there question. really a worldwide humanity civilization that was collaborative? I think so. Stick around, folks. We'll be back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back. Uh, we are um, looking at this uh, greatest epidemic, the great epidemic, which is the loss of our known soul. As humanity. Yeah, it says here, and this is really interesting. To a considerable degree, the development of the Wicot uh, Wetiko disease corresponds with the rise of what Europeans chose to call civilization. He says this is not a mere coincidence. And uh, yeah, remember, I history is his story. That's right. So, what they want us to believe, but in fact. I've been studying the the truth about the Tartarian Empire. How many mm -hmm. of us even learned about it? Right, not many. Uh, and now we know that the Tartarian Empire was a land more vast than Russia, and it actually probably was most of Russia. Probably so. And 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 other areas, and including the U.S. And in fact, Columbus and many of these other cannibals were actually coming to devour this advanced civilization, this humanitarian worldwide communication network that we had and technology by the way yeah and we're trying to we're starting to find out too through other sources that uh, before the ice age ice age and between all the ice ages there were probably pretty modern civilizations maybe not like us but similar to us that have been going on four or five times if we start digging back into history we know that all these beautiful buildings that were here were we probably, don't do that today yeah we were probably taking over buildings the romans were taking over buildings from a previous civilization same with the egyptians same with the Greeks. You got it, with Nico. All that. But I think let's do a show on that. Uh, and many yeah. of you all probably have not heard this. It will be a mind blow. If you want to get a little pre, you know, preview of kind of what I want to share with you, and Nico has yeah. been exploring it as well, but, is the Tartarian Empire and the reset. Was there a reset? The mud floods. Was there a time when we were already more advanced, and there were powers that saw a way to exploit a Watiko um, energy that took over? And, and then here we are. So let's take a look at that. You, you'll find it interesting. What I was going to say is uh, I think the beginning of this was probably kind of a uh, something happened in your area. Now you have to move. Maybe the weather turns or maybe going through a grand solar minimum like we're expecting to go through now. Or a big and, mud flood. That yeah, or, or a flood or something tragic happens, and now you have to move. Are you aware of the orphan trains? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. So... What Overwhelming. There's like a reset. Yeah. So what I'm talking about is that, you know, when you have to move into a different area, usually there's people there, and they don't want you there. So this is the beginning of what, what I would call a type of uh, 
situation where people say, you're coming in too fast, uh, uh, we're not ready for you, I can't share my bread with you, you've got a problem, it's your problem, and the other person says, no, now it's your problem because I'm here. Uh -huh. And the war starts and we start div not dividing up the food, but locking up the food and somewhere along the line. That's how the whole civilization got off the wrong path, I think. I don't know exactly what happened, I don't think anybody does, but that's kind of the general yeah. idea, because I don't think we were born saying, hey, I'm going to fight somebody because I'm going to take everything from them and I'm going to be king. That's not the way the human be being works. But once you start uh, being very frightened and locking up food and defending that food, the whole thing starts to blossom. Now you have to, eh, if you've got a little bit more than the other guy, you can hire somebody to do it. You don't have to do it yourself anymore. Uh -huh. So the whole thing starts beginning. Now you invent a little throne or a chair so you can be above everybody else. And this is the way I see that modern man has eclipsed all the other things. And we've taken over the planet, but we really haven't gained anything because we've destroyed it in the meantime. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, good, so good what points. we're trying to do here, at least through my life now, with trying to be healthy and everything looks like that, explore a better way for myself. Uh -huh. I'm not going to change anybody else's mind, but I want to live at peace with myself and my wife and my children and my friends. That's why I took up jiu-jitsu. That's why I, I'm doing the things I'm doing. This is why we have a show and we can talk about these things. Yeah. It's not just about the food, but I really do believe it probably started with the food. Well, I don't. I mm -hmm. think the food is secondary. In fact, I think probably when we talked about these breathing ins and breathing outs, in other words, the expansion of our beings, of our spiritual consciousness, we probably didn't even need food. We were light beings and we were breatharians, honestly. Mm -hmm. I think that as we come back, but I'm not saying that the food is bad, but I'm saying the more kind of unspiritual we are, the more mm -hmm. we have to kill animals and do this, that, that mm -hmm. when we expand well, consciously... I think we haven't seen that other side. I mean, I've never seen that. No, we haven't. You know, so. Well, at least in this life you have Yeah, and I don't right. know about another life because I don't have a memory of that, so all we can do is speculate about those things. But I want to, instead of speculating, I want to talk about what we know. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think the food is the particular problem, because once you lock it up, it starts the whole thing over. I don't see anything before that happening. Mm-hmm. So well, that's just my it, own opinion it, on it. I mean, so. I think that we have to agree that food uh, is a big part of what we do. Well, before, remember, we shared food, we killed it, we shared it. And there was no advantage for not sharing it. Uh -huh. But now if you have a barn full of food that you call food, and maybe not the healthiest food, but it kept you alive, and you can keep it from others so you and your family can be alive and the others aren't? Well, uh, the Watiko type of mentality or a soulness it. says it's scarce and I'm not sharing. Right. And then that brings out the the negative sides of our personalities. The, you're in your head instead of in your heart. And and that the idea that there's a scarceness instead of a plentiness. And I yeah. think that's what I'm saying. That's right. I so think, the ego kind of gets involved. So. But I don't know if it resulted in man. I said, I'm going to go back to Ephesians, mm -hmm. what we said. We're not fighting against man. Mm -hmm. We're fighting against a different level, a different dimensional energy of evilness, of wickedness mm -hmm. that comes in and infects man. So you see what I'm saying? Man himself, I don't think, degrades into being, you know, I'm going to kill you and everything. It's you this. You see it happening. Well, no, I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that You're the saying actual... You're it's an outside force. It's an outside force. We no, know I it's think an it's an inward force. Well, it's inward. I'm saying it, <laughs> well, no, say, it's not an say. outside. It's, mm -hmm. it's an inward force that, that is multidimensional, yeah. multidimensional yeah. and comes in. Yeah. I don't think our nature is to be this way. You know? That I is not our nature. You. No, because when you look at the native people, I think that's where we begin from. And then... That's what they're saying. It's a virus. Yeah, they you know, are I mean, that Don Juan, you so know, read, from, the, read the stories, this is an folks. interesting article. Let's put it in the newsletter. Of course, I put everything in the newsletter. Yes, yeah. sounds but, good. Uh, yeah, so read this, folks. And the reason I brought this whole thing out is because we have other things that we want to explore. And so when we come back, we're going to go into, you know, really, I think what makes us happy, you know, and what we're trying to find out about ourselves. But we came uh, here to wake up. Or to remember who we are, I think, yeah, at, a, a at a spiritual uh, level. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so, we, you know, a lot what, of times why don't we do more things that make us happy? Because that's really what life's about. Well, I think because we're programmed not to. I think mm -hmm. we have we're a We're programmed TV. to be slaves. Yeah, exactly. The Producers. Wichico, we're the Wichico Consumers. in a sense. Yeah.
Well, the Wetiko has infected us. That's right. That we feel like we are in competition. Yeah, so how do we get ourselves out of this? And I think one of the first steps that we always talk about is we get to eating right so our mind can be a little bit stiller, and uh -huh. then we can come up with some of the things that we're going to talk about. But here, I like so. the idea that scientists say that traveling makes us much happier than any material wealth, anything that we can hold. The best things in life are not things. And I, for one, everyone knows I've been traveling a lot, so I've yeah, been having sure a lot have. of fun <laughs> with so, your leg and all that's right despite <laughs> no matter the what despite the mishaps <laughs> that's for sure so, so stick, stick with around us. we'll be right back <laughs> heard Nico DeHaan as co-host of Living a Primal Lifestyle, which airs every Friday at noon Eastern time on TFNN, and would like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at tfnn.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So maybe shopping and buying things is not the way to long-term contentment. It says uh, in this article, according to research conducted at Cornell University, that we often feel that we have to get money and then spend it to get that high of shopping. But there's a way to break that damaging cycle. And the psychology, uh, psychology professor at Cornell University has revealed that people experience the same amount of happiness when they make a purchase as when they go and travel. The difference is, here's the important bit, that while the happiness you derive from a purchase wanes over time,
The memories of your travel experience still supply you with happiness hormones for a long, long time. That's, re that's encouraging. Yeah, I, I see this the same as locking up the food in a sense, you know. I just wonder how the farmers are feeling out in the Dakotas right now with the uh, grain full of uh, water being soaked and it's, the purchase isn't worth it. Right. I, I've often, uh, you know, you buy something on Amazon, you're waiting for it and you go, man, I can't wait till it's here and you get it and then all of a sudden it's kind of disappointing. It's okay, it's what you wanted, but it's not exactly as they described. And you forget about it that yeah, day. Yeah, and you forget about it. So, yeah, purchasing things and hoarding things and just the accumulation of things is part of that Whitaco disease that we were talking about earlier. Uh, it started with the food, but certainly now we have, uh, you know, we're buying and buying and buying things and being less satisfied with it, too. Well, uh, what Tico, I think, is that gluttony, and it goes beyond food. It's a gluttony in life, more and right. more, me, me, yeah, it's consume. Certainly, and we certainly have that, and I bring, you know, back to that buffalo thing where the guy's shooting, up, you know, the buffalo off the train for no good reason, just for sport, because of the ego, and mm -hmm. this is where that ego comes in again, and we certainly have an egocentric type of civilization now. Even the head of it is kind of like, you know, pretty prominent now because, you know, that's the way our society is. Uh, we need to get back to the spirituality where we share things and it's not I'm the most important thing is that we are the most important thing because we need to survive and we need to be healthy. Uh -huh. So it's it's that whole thing. So buying stuff isn't going to work. So one of the things the, these what days... What is the secret sauce to happiness, Nico? Well, traveling certainly is one of those things Top that, of my I, you know, no <laughs> matter what. I mean, I remember jumping in the car in the 1960s and just for the sake of going for a drive just for the sake of traveling because looking you out the window it, and seeing what you see window. and I'm sure our ancestors had that for walking it's just that we've dulled down the walking because everything looks the same it's no fun to walk I mean if you go to Colorado and walk in the woods then you got something to look at but down here every city along the highway is the same every building looks the same every McDonald's is the same it's a boring boring place and we want to escape so I say let's do away with the freeways and the cars and let's walk again because that would be much more of an, an adventure, you know, going uh -huh. through all this different type of community. I remember, you know, taking the back roads before the uh, expressways were and wow. going down through Tennessee and I remember the fried chicken in Tennessee was always the best, you know, so uh -huh. I would always give my parents stop in Tennessee that's where I want to eat dinner, you know. Uh, it was more of an adventure than now we get in the car and we book. And oh, yeah. we, we get there, and it's the destination. It's not so much the travel. I, you know, I can really relate to that, Nico, because, you know, my family is from rural Virginia. <laughs> so we often took the back curvy roads, mm -hmm. and you'd stop at a stand, and there'd be fresh peaches there mm -hmm. in the summer, and uh, maybe some boiled peanuts or something. Exactly. You'd get what was on the route, and you weren't just on this high freeway seeing how fast you could get there yeah and that's the dilemma we have I mean we're going to go to Colorado uh, in a couple of months and you know we almost have to hightail it out of Florida and spend 20 hours driving just to get where we want to be because yeah. it looks well, that's different. a good side of, of the well it's of the, the, the interstate thing that we can do it yeah. yeah there are good sides to it too but I always revel when I have the time to go down the country roads and then then I'm back back in the 1950s in a sense because yeah. not everything looks the same You, anymore. you remember saying Sunday driver? Well, I yeah. think a lot, of, a lot of young kids think, what were they doing, speeding on Sunday or something? Because they think it's the idea that the person was just moseying along. Yeah. Just That's for sure. observing what's going on. Hey, here's some more info. Okay. Robert Waldinger, head of an 80-year-old research at Harvard, uh, knows much about happiness. The results from one study revealed that individuals who most connected to their family and their friends and their community and other people were the absolute happiest and healthiest. Yeah. Well, travel brings us to new cultures and new places. In such an environment, everything around you feels more exciting, more enriched. Your brain and body uh, alike lose track of time. And that's kind of the thing that we always want when we're going on vacation. And uh, I remember many years I never had vacations. And then it was kind of that empty feeling where you say, well, I had a week off, but I decided to work. I needed the money. Mm -hmm. That's not a place I want to be anymore. 
You yeah. know, and luckily I'm at the stage of my life where now I'm looking more forward to the traveling and things that my wife can do and I can do. And the things that actually less. bring you happiness. What That's do right. I want to spend my time doing? Mm -hmm. Here's other things you can do for long lasting happiness. Participating in extreme sports, learning a new skill, yes. uh, underwater basket weaving. <laughs> Just pick that up. But, you know, <laughs> That'd be a tough or, one. Or, or going to unusual events will bring you joy. Well, you know, you mentioned expre extreme sports. You know, my guy will. He's in his mid 60s and still playing soccer. I mean, yeah. I always tell him, "There's your firm, there's soccer, then there's me." <laughs> you know, and <laughs> not in kids, that order. Yeah, yeah, you know, soccer is way up there. And again, for him, it's like he says, "It makes me feel like a kid again." Yeah. And what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with uh -huh. it. And we've had a kind of revelation in our house too, because my wife, in, since February, has been working from home, so she's there a lot more than you know I'm used to and everything like that. And really been wonderful. I had a little anxiety at first. Would we get in each other's way? And we don't seem to. We seem to be enjoying our, each other's company. There's definitely more of a calmness evolving mm -hmm. in the house, which is really nice. You know, she doesn't have to get up at the break of dawn. And head in the and, traffic yeah, and be in the for an chaos. Hour, right. And then an hour on the way back and all the anxiety that goes with that. Mm -hmm. And she still would be able to build the same thing and much happier. And of course, she loves her job and that's what it's all about, certainly. So, you know, the things change and things can be good. And I think you have to find happiness where you can. And uh, the joy of being with somebody you love, the joy of having your family around the joy of having your freedom from financial worries is certainly one so you have to you know take all that stuff into account in our modern living and I think the other thing that I always come back to it's about the food because one of the things for traveling too and even staying at home is you really have to pay attention to your health which means that you better be enjoying really good food and finding that out and that's part of what the show is about here too is finding that nice balance in life where you're eating what you want to eat, that you're not getting sick every day. I mean, I can't remember the last time I didn't feel good. I feel so great. And my wife is the same way, and most of the people that are around me feel the same way, too. And I'm, I, I just feel blessed on that. And I know you feel the same way, too. I do. Look, look how you healed from this. And you're already out of a cast, and mm -hmm. you've been hobbling around for a couple of weeks, and now you look like uh, you're, you could put your high heels on and still... Oh, I look at high heels and I freak <laughs> I know, out. But, right. however, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, I am happy to say that my surgeon made the comment, you healed as well as anyone that I've treated at any age. That yeah. was the kicker for that me. Is. I liked hearing that at any age. Yeah. Uh, but it is important that we do all those things. And a big part of what I did was I got out in the sun. The sun makes the flower bloom. I wanted to bloom. I got out in the sun. You bloomed all right. Sure. <laughs> We've got good stuff coming back. Maybe we'll go into Maybe some of our Native people know about spiritual awakening. And let's talk a little bit about that. We'll be right back, folks. Mm -hmm. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, 
South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. There was a time when I was feeling really stressed out and uh, kind of a spiritual coach of mine said, Paige, don't forget, come here and do what you came here to do. And, and what he was really trying to tell me is that we really came here for our soul's journey, not this flesh and blood journey. And we were talking earlier about this virus. The greatest sickness we as humanity have known is this Watiko. Ancient cultures have talked about it, today's modern cultures. That is a spiritual sickness, a a valuing things that really have no value and missing the things that do. So perhaps we should take and look at, into some insight into our spiritual awakening. The prophecy of the rainbow people. Let me share a quote. The Native American prophecy. When the earth is ravaged and the animals are dying, a new tribe of people shall come unto the earth from many colors, classes, creeds, and who by their actions and deeds shall make the earth green, healthy again. They will be known as the warriors of the rainbow. Now, uh, Native American prophecies, I believe, come from uh, the past. So I think... It, it's kind of a, like the cycle system that we well, What is the cycle often, system? Right. We've heard about the Mayan cycle system. The, the, many of the Indians in, in North America share information about the cycle. And I was telling Nico on the break, I believe that we've had resets. And you, we've heard about the Bronze Age, the Gold Age, the Golden Age, the Bronze Age, Metal Age. This kind of time frame is when we are not as spiritually evolved. Mm -hmm. And as we expand and breathe out, we become more spiritually evolved. Yeah. And then we, well, we retract. We also know that the, the, uh, back in the 40s, they found the KT boundary, which was the first boundary of 12,000 years ago where there was something going on that happened that wiped out just about everything on Earth. And mm -hmm. there were four layers below that. So we know at least five times we came around in the circle. Seems to be about 12,000 years. Maybe that's well, why 12,000 years is always stuck in our, our minds and our mm -hmm. spirit. Well, so, it's all part of the <clears throat> clock. That's right. Uh, so all these uh, ancient people have always talked about, you know, what's going to happen and it's going to come again, so be aware. And I think this is an important thing for us to learn because uh, we know that the Grand Solar Minimum is coming and perhaps... But uh, perhaps that's a new reset. Maybe it's a reset, mm -hmm. maybe it's a mild reset, maybe it's a big reset. We really mm -hmm. don't know, but uh, I like what you said that we are uh, more of the spirit, you know, the way we're I, spiritual beings having a human experience the way, the way, versus human beings having a, becoming spiritual. Yeah, the way I envision it is that uh, we kind of pop into these bodies. Yeah, like cars. 
Yeah, it's uh, whether we pop into a human or a reptile or maybe we're going to be a bunny next time. Uh, we're trapped in that body and we have to live in that body. So you can imagine being trapped in certain uh, spiritual bodies and only having that to do. Imagine being only a snake and you can only move in one way and, and now you have to learn that life. You know, I was in Key West this weekend mm -hmm. and we took our company to the Butterfly uh, conservatory oh. in Key West. Have you been there? Uh, many, many years ago, back in the 80s. Oh, it is just so lovely. And mm -hmm. and then I realized these beautiful creatures only live two weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the the process they go just to have that glory. Yeah, yeah who knows? You, you could and be a butterfly. Mosquitoes live for two or three days. You know, right. everybody has their different cycle. Uh, I think it's uh, important to be comfortable in whatever you're in now and to uh, make sure that you do the best you can where you're at and that's being in the light or being in the heart yes, and I... not being in the mind and the mind is the eagle that we talked about earlier and that's mm -hmm. where our society is at, is at. Exactly. and we need, we need to lose the ego and get and back, get into back into more humanity. into the heart centered that's and that's right. why we're talking about a lot of the Schumann frequencies that mm -hmm. are bringing us back into our heart center let's talk a little bit more of the great spiritual teachers who walked the earth taught the basics of truth and the whirling rainbow prophecy will return and walk amongst us once more showing sharing their power and understanding with all the whole human race will be called the people and there will be no more war sickness or hunger forever and that's one of the areas where I've gotten very interested in what happened to the Tartarian Empire which was a worldwide empire buildings and so forth the old maps show there was a connectiveness a a consolidation a even though there were different religions they were all collaborative I think that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. So I think well, part of the mission here for us on a, on a uh, health level is that we need to be healthy in our mind too. So uh, if we're eating great food and we feel like we're not getting sick anymore, uh, we're going to have a good life. But now we need to also tap into that, uh, that light that we have in our heart so we can share that with people. In other words, be kind. Uh, my dad mm -hmm. always told me, if anything else, just be kind. If nothing else, just do that. And to be able to live with our brothers and sisters and all the animals that we have here and start flourishing this earth instead of building concrete, instead of killing things, and instead of messing up the environment the way we're messing it up. It's just I, I see a much simpler life being much more rewarding than what we're doing here is chasing our own tail. Here's something uh, the spiritual teacher Eckhart Tolle, the um the Power of Now was probably his most famous book. Many people who are going through the early stages of the awakening process are no longer certain what their outer purpose is. There you go. Like I told you. What drives the world no longer drives them. Seeing the madness of our civilization so clearly they feel somewhat alienated from the culture around them. Some feel they inhabit a no-man's land between two worlds. They are no longer run by the ego, yet the arising awareness has not yet become fully integrated into their lives. Inner and outer purpose have not merged. I can really relate to that. Yeah, and that's, I, that's what I see happening now, and I think that's what we're talking about present times in the Hopi prophecy is this is what's going on now. Share this with the eagle and the condor. And the eagle and the condor is an ancient um, Amazon prophecy, and that's not the company Amazon. Right. <laughs> uh, that speaks of the human society splitting into two paths, that of the eagle, north. The north, and the condor, south. The path of the condor is the path of the heart, of intuition, and of the feminine. The part of the eagle is the path of the mind, of the industrial, and of the masculine. The eagle, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm. And it says that the says that the 1490s would begin a 500-year period during which the eagle people would become so powerful that they would virtually drive the condor people out of existence. This can be seen in the conquering of the Americas and the killing and oppression of the indigenous peoples in the subsequent 500 years, up to and including today. That's so we've sure. been in the time of the eagle yeah. and the condor is coming back. That's what we say, the feminine energy. So that's really a description of the fight, the breathing out, the expansive, loving feminine energy, the contraction of the male energy. Yep. Interesting. Uh, this uh, legend comes uh, dates back to more than 2,000 years. Although we cannot be sh of certain when and where this story originates, I have found very various versions of it in the Andes through Central America and has seen the influence of it, of it on the Maya, the Aztec, the Hopi, and the Navajo.
Yeah, and it really is true. This whole prophecy of the eagle and the condor can be taken on many levels, but it really is a foreshadowing. It's a balancing of the yin and yang, the female male energy, the bridging of northern and southern cultures. Yeah. I find this all fascinating. And there's a video that goes along with this, uh, and I'll include that uh, in the Health Signals newsletter, which I'm going to... Uh, yeah, they're actually, here, yeah, so. this, this, these indigenous leaders in this video actually share the reunion of this prophecy of the eagle and the condor, I think bringing us back to uh, uh, a more loving society. So I hope you guys will watch that when it gets in the newsletter. Yep. we got one more segment. See you after this short break. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then and head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day. Featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business, TFNN broadcasts five days a week live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the Bull Bear Nadex Options Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. So as I said, one of my great spiritual teachers uh, reminded me that uh, I should remember who I am and why I came here and do what I came here to do. And perhaps that is to remember who we are and develop ourselves spiritually. Yet in this crazy world, we often find it hard to make time. <laughs> so perhaps retirement is the time. And listen to this headline, retire at 55 and live to 80. Work till you're 65 and die at 67. Perhaps this is a message to remember that we really came here to develop ourselves spiritually and be happy.
Yeah. And, and you're at that point, Nico, right now. I'm at that point right now, and uh, one of the things, they have a few hints here on what to do uh, to make yourself a little bit better while you're going through this transition of working, not working, and trying to find yourself. Number one is keep making friends. In other words, uh, be social. Don't shut yourself up and lock yourself in the house, and now you don't have a job anymore, so you don't go anywhere. That's no good either, naturally. Yeah, building that human interaction definitely mm -hmm. too. and uh, uh, the good thing is there's a lot more people my age that are around too yeah exactly so, so even though I've had a lot of people that are my age and younger die there's still a lot of them around so I, I like that also blessing. keep learning like we do yeah and you want to keep we, you want to keep learning the newest thing it may not be something that you thought was right but uh, you know fresh eyes may shed new light I that think something I'm doing opens more up. studying now than when I even when I went to college I mean every day I'm doing two or three hours mm -hmm. of just reading of stuff that I don't know about that I want to know exercise about. of the brain yeah and the third thing here is says finding something to work for in other words now you can turn your hobby into some maybe making some money or just enjoying it or but doing I'll, some work for a cause that causes your heart to expand yes my wife now is on the board of uh, habitat for humanity yes where they uh, allow people to uh, purchase homes uh, at a reasonable rate and uh, work for it themselves and it's a really good program she's been doing this for the last few years and it's been very rewarding and I've been involved in that a little bit too and the other thing is, is the traveling that we talked about the uh, the adventure the, the, of retirement. Yeah, and one of the things that Time I Time stops, right? Yeah, I always thought that, you know, the, the old days was the man and his horse, but today is the man and his truck. You know? <laughs> right. And if you've got the wheels, then you can, you're can you a little bit more free, and that's kind of the way society is today. Thanks for sticking around, folks. Have a great day. We'll see you next show. Bye-bye.